The dust will settle only when everyone agrees to stop kicking the dirt. Very good, Sue. Thank you. Roll call, please. Belt. Here. Gorin. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Here. Common. Here. Hammond. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Matichek. Here. Rinfleisch. Excused. Raisler. Here. Samson. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Excused. And Versi. Here. 14 present. We have a quorum. Now if we can all stand and join Alderman Heidemann in the <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Joe. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting, Vice President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from the previous Council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion on approval of the minutes. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. <clears throat> Honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your confirmation. Greg Ryan to be considered for appointment to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired position of Heather Cleveland, whose term expires 4-23-2012, signed by the mayor. Do we have a motion, Vice President Rinfleisch? Or Vice President Decker, excuse me. Uh, yes, I move that the floor be open for nominations oh, for a member. Oh, I apologize. We just need to confirm. Soul. Motion to confirm. Motion to confirm. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to confirm Greg Ryan to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. And as I said earlier, no relation to me. <laughs> Under discussion? If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Attorney McLean. And, uh, Todd Wolf to be considered for appointment to the City Plan Commission to fill the unexpired position of Stephen Hemsing, whose term expires on 4 2014 signed by the mayor. Do we have a motion? Vice Decker. President Decker. We need a suspension on this one. Move to suspend. suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Rules are suspended. Motion to confirm. Confirm the appointment. Second. We have a motion and a second to confirm the appointment under discussion. If there is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Election of the Board of Water Commissioners. We only have one candidate. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I move that we open the floor for nominations for a member of the Board of Water Commissioners. Second. We have a motion and a second to open the floor for nominations. Do we have any nominations? I'd like to nominate Ray Hain for the Board of Water Commissioners. Second. We have a motion and a second to nominate Ray Hain. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Going three times, are there any further nominations? There are not. Vice President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the nominations be closed and the city clerk be directed to cast a unanimous ballot for Ray Hain as a member of Board of Water Commissioners. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the ballots and pass a unanimous vote for Mr. Ray Hain, who is an existing member of the board. And Mr. Hain is here. Do we have any discussion? On this? Mr. Hain, would you like to say anything? If you can step up front, sir. Thank you. I look forward to, uh, to another term on the board. We have a relatively ambitious master plan for an aging facility uh, and a lot of aging infrastructure. And obviously with the economic times, every month we deal with how we're going to handle things and how we're going to make things last. So uh, I look forward to trying to implement that master plan, which each year gets closer and closer to the point where we're really going to start doing some major projects. So thank you for your vote of confidence. Thank you, Ray. Okay. Um, yes. Do we have a? Do you have a motion out there? 
Yeah. We have a, a motion uh, to unanimously nominate or unanimously pass uh, the vote for Mr. Hain. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public forum, Sue. We have five this evening. First on the list would be Patrick Gillette. If you could come to the front, please. Pat, you may have to maneuver that thing. It looks like it's been bent a few times, the mic. I'll stand on my toes. <laughs> address please. Home address is 915 North Avenue City of Sheboygan. North what? North Avenue. North Avenue. And you will have five minutes sir. Thank you Mr. Mayor and members of the Sheboygan Common Council. Tonight I'm addressing the many misconceptions, deceptions, delusions and totally inappropriate misgivings alluded to by certain members of this council, the mayor and the mayor's attorney. First of all the cost to the taxpayer regarding the process of removal of the mayor. There's no cost for a special prosecutor. The cost for the procedural attorney to represent the city is the same as when he represents the Law and Licensing Committee. And those hearings that he represents are for sex offenders and tavern licenses. That cost is higher than the cost regarding this matter. Secondly, regarding the mayor's rights, what about the victim's rights? All you discuss is, drunken, is the mayor's drunkenness. What about the mayor's sister-in-law? What about Angela Payne? What about the girl allegedly sexually assaulted in Elkhart Lake? And who knows how many others? What about the victim's rights? Third, I want to talk about procedure. Those of you who are opposed to going forward with the complaint process are either ignorant of the municipal code and state statutes, or wrongly believe that you're immune from charges for malfeasance, misfeasance, or misconduct in public office. The city adopted state statute 1959, Code of Ethics, as amended for local governments. That government decisions and policies be made in the proper channels of the government structure, that the public has confidence in the integrity of its government, to establish guidelines for ethical standards of conduct, setting forth those acts or actions that are incompatible with the best interests of the city. The provisions and purpose of this article and such rules and regulations as may be established are declared to be in the best public interest. To discharge faithfully the duties of their office regardless of personal considerations. Public officials should not exceed their authority or breach the law. No city official shall grant any special consideration, treatment, or advantage to any citizen beyond that which is available to every other citizen. This code requires that public officials be independent, impartial, and responsible. Your opinion of the mayor's actions are not in the public's best interest. The law and procedure established by this city and state government are. Once a complaint is filed and accepted, law and procedure rule not emotions or opinions. Fourth, in my opinion, members of this council, as well as the mayor and his attorney, have caused delays in this process. The mayor and his attorney clamor for due process, yet they themselves has usurped the process. The mayor's attorney, letter to the council, it's a mute issue, another example of threats to the council. First of all, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. Voir dire is a mute issue. The jury's pre-selected. Secondly, the issue of the legal standard by which the mayor would be removed is clearly spelled out in the municipal ordinances and state statutes. Certain members of this council and the mayor's attorney should read them. Third, the issue of the ADA complaint. This is just another attempt by the mayor's attorney to muffle the already confused minds of certain council members. The issues of fact are, the mayor is not being investigated for his alcoholism but for actions he took while using his alcoholism as an excuse. The mayor has lied to this council several times. The mayor's public display during the council meetings on August 15, 2011 was the basis 
for the complaint before the council tonight. All these conditions are prima facie. The facts speak for themselves, require no witness. Second of all, it would be ipso facto. In other words, definite grounds, and the code says so. Ipso facto dismissal for violation of these grounds. Without a doubt, the only protection the mayor has, the fire uh, department has, the police department has, is they either are protected by state statute or have a contract to specify a procedure. The only thing this council has to do is worry about the procedure. The mayor and his attorney have had ample time to establish a proper basis for a claim under ADA, but refused to do so. The ADA rules do allow for disciplinary action and termination for alcoholics. All public officials and officers of the court are accountable for their actions. These threats and misinformation have got to stop. Excuse the procedure me. and subsequent investigation. Excuse me, Pat, would you like your extra minute? I got 10 seconds. Move to approve the additional minute. Okay. Sorry. The procedure and subsequent investigations will reveal the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Uh, Henry Capitillo. Oh. <clears throat> Henry, can I have your home address, please? Yes, uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. North what? North 38th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, I'm here not to kick up any dust. So, um, <laughs> after hearing the former Alderman Pat Gillette, um, citing all the reasons why you should get rid of the mayor, I'm basically here to tell you that or to ask you that, to put this all to rest tonight. You know, if you look at this, just look at the cameras that we have here. Headlines, for how many months about this issue? And you're saying, what, what did he do? What illegal activity did he do? If you recall, we had a state attorney general, Peggy Loggenslaughter, got cited for DUI, an offense. We had our former sheriff, Sheriff Koning, DUI also. We had, I think, a state senator this last year, DUI, spent time in jail. Um, none of these people were, were terminated from their employment. None of these people, their boards, ended up getting rid of them. But because the mayor went out and got drunk, passed out at some bar, you want to get rid of them. If you're looking at for a fight, I think you're going to get one. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody read the, uh, the newspaper with the lawyer's comments on there, and it doesn't take a genius to figure out that the mayor is not just going to crawl in some hole if you get rid of him. He is definitely going to be filing some kind of lawsuit for wrongful termination. I mean, his attorney will fight. He gets one third of whatever the mayor gets. You've already lost one lawsuit. You may say, no, we didn't, we just settled. The newspaper said anywhere from $700,000 to $350,000. I mean, I'm thinking of a quote that I heard from Senator, the minority Senate leader, Mitch McConnell, that basically said, you don't gain any education from the second kick of the mule. Meaning you've already lost one and now you're asking for another situation where you could potentially lose more, maybe even millions. I think the mayor is a fighter. He's not just going to give up and die. He's going to keep fighting this issue until he sees his satisfaction. You're talking about the cost. The cost, Mr. Gillette said, there's no cost to the city. I think that's baloney. This attorney is going to charge you on a per hour basis, whether he's, he's, he's doing it for some uh, hearing that he attends or He's going to be keeping an eye on the lawyer that's not charging you anything, but he's going to be getting paid. You've already approved $50,000 for spending of that money. If you would have taken that money, you could have paid for the quarry to keep open to fund the lifeguards, but you didn't. And you've already approved that, that expenditure, expenditure up to $50,000. You say, 
Well, you know what? He's embarrassed the city. How many other issues can you think of other, other people that have embarrassed the city or potentially have embarrassed the city? If you look at, I've talked to city employees, they think he's done a good job. I think he's done a good job. And you know what? I didn't even support the mayor. When he was running for election for mayor, I supported his candidate, Terry Van Akron. But I'm the first one to tell you, I think you're doing the wrong thing by getting rid of him or trying to get rid of him. If you think it's embarrassing now, wait until this all goes into the media. You're not only gonna see the state media here, you're gonna see CNN, Fox, MSNBC. How many nights did we hear about the recall elections in Madison and everything in the state that we had? $30 million, over $30 million spent for what? Nothing, nothing happened. You could have taken that $30 million and probably spent it on rehabbing some schools or funding some teachers instead of doing that. So I would ask you, you know what, look at the, look at the long picture, look at what's gonna happen if this goes on. Are we gonna continue this? And you may say, well, we, we're willing to take the chance. You know what, I've already heard things out in the community of things that are gonna come out of you, other council members, embarrassing things that are gonna come out if he ends up having to go to court and he's gonna end up subpoenaing people. You know what? I wouldn't want that on the front page of the paper, but you think that the, this isn't gonna happen? You better believe it, it is. It's, it's a circus media now. And look at what's gone on. Ever since this started, instead of, why do you think that people get so frustrated with their elected officials? The Congress approval rating is at 12%. I would imagine that it's similar to local officials and state officials. Excuse me, would, Henry, would you like any extra time? Yes. Move to grant the additional minute. If you, if you look at what the issues are, even in Sheboygan County or City of Sheboygan here, unemployment rate is 10.3%. If you were taking your time and initiatives on looking at those types of issues, we might have more people employed in this city instead of spending your time on this issue. So what I'm saying is look at, the, look at this realistically and look at what potentially could happen. And if you think that we, we, we've had headlines, you haven't seen nothing yet. So I would ask you to put this to rest, end it tonight, move on, censure the mayor. Sure, you may not agree with what he's done, but censure him and move on and get, get on with important issues within the city. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. All next. Right. Next on the list would be Delcy Johnson. Delcy, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. <clears throat> you will have five minutes. Mayor Ryan, City Clerk Richards, City Attorney McLean, Aldermen and Citizens. The Finance Committee reviewed the 2010 audit of the city finances, including the ambulance fund, at their meeting on July 25th. The audit shows expenditures in excess of revenues for the ambulance fund in the amount of $8,000, or in common bookkeeping, a loss of $8,000. The marginal profit, which is shown as an expenditure, is $289,000. But the ambulance fund balance was $8,000 less at the end of 2010 than at the beginning of 2010. The $289,000 contribution to the general fund is a considerable difference from the $376,000 that was touted by Finance Director Amodio as the contribution to the general fund during the ambulance referendum public forums. When the labor and benefit expenses of all the personnel needed to operate the three ambulances is calculated, the marginal profit becomes a loss of over one and a half million dollars. And that doesn't include any cost for Deputy Chief Butler, who told me that he estimated he spent 90% of his time on ambulance-related work. It should also be noted that the fire department answered only 99 structure fire calls in 2010. That's fewer than two calls per station per month. 
they answered 2,828 rescue calls. And I think personal ex personnel expenditures for the ambulance service should reflect this. The referendum last November favored the fire department by 500 votes out of 16,000. But for many citizens, the issue has not gone away. The fire union's slogan during the ambulance referendum, vote no, keep taxes low, didn't exactly work out as they pledged because during last year's budget, while all other major department budgets were being cut, the fire department received an additional $280,000. Would the result of the referendum have been different if citizens had been given different information? The city contracted with a new billing service late last year, which was expected to greatly increase collections. But the new billing service wrote off over $400,000 in the first six months of 2011, while collecting only $374,000, or less than half of the amounts billed. In an effort to bolster revenues, Mayor Ryan and Chief Herman have visited all the nursing homes in the city, soliciting transfer business to lo local hospitals using fire department ambulances, which has been predominantly handled by Orange Cross. Per Chief Herman, transfers from nursing homes using fire department ambulances doubled in the first six months of 2011. And while this may put Chief Herman closer to his goal of putting Orange Cross out of business, I ask all of you to his, who support his efforts to consider the consequences. On July 4th, all of the fire department ambulances were busy, and Orange Cross was called as a backup for an accident in the city. Fortunately, for those in need of help, Orange Cross was still in business. But how would that emergency have been handled if the fire department succeeds in putting Orange Cross out of business? Would those in need of help have to wait for emergency personnel from Oostburg or Plymouth or Sheboygan Falls? And what would be the impact on those needing help? If Orange Cross goes out of business, the only other option to relying on ambulances from other communities would be to lease additional ambulances and hire more firefighters, which would be a substantial additional cost to the taxpayers. And I question whether the taxpayers would support this. When the fire department took over the ambulance service, Chief Herman wrote an article in the Wisconsin Professional Firefighters Magazine in which he said, maybe Orange Cross will still fold and then we'll take over the entire Sheboygan area and hire 12 more firefighters. Whenever I have approached Chief Herman about this, he has responded that he doesn't want to put Orange Cross out of business because he needs them for a backup. But his actions speak louder than his words as he continues to try to take more business away from Orange Cross. It is one thing to try to run the city as a business, but it is totally unethical for a city to try to put a private business out of business. At a time when we should be downsizing the fire department, Chief Herman's long-range plan options include adding long-distance transports, which would take firefighters out of the area for several hours and undoubtedly result in calling in overtime. There is no reason for the taxpayers to pay firefighters to do transports because Orange Cross is very capable of doing it and government should not do what the private sector can do. To those of you who support Orange Cross and may need ambulance services, Orange Cross's number is easy to remember, 451-9111. And if you have family in nursing homes, tell the nursing staff to call Orange Cross if your family member needs to be transferred to a hospital. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dulce. Next on the list Next. would be Joanne Scribner. Is she here? I don't, I don't see, see her, her here. All right, and the last person on the list would be Milt Storm. Mel, can I have your home address, please? Yes, 1736 Marvin Court. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. I want to thank the mayor and the council members that I may address you on my version of facts and ideas. I certainly want to thank Sue Richards' department of how graciously they assist me in council proceedings. 
The issue that I would like to address is the recall of duly elected, elected government officials. Time permitting, I would like to address why we need to, why the need for a city administrator to replace a competent mayor. In section 12 of the Wisconsin statutes, I found that the recall of elected officials was created in November of 1926 and amended in 1989. By some stroke of genius, last week I came across an article in my National Review magazine in regard to the recalls really recently in Madison, and I quote, some 85 years ago, an amendment to the Wisconsin Constitution authorizing the recall procedure was passed. Some foresaw the event as this. In October 1926, Manitowoc attorney I.J. Nash wrote an op-ed predicting that such a provision would make Wisconsin the laughingstock of the country. Nash added that a recall pro proceeding is slow, conducted with passion, very expensive, sets neighbor against neighbor, and is unaccompanied by sworn or competent evidence. It convinces very few that justice has been served and how true that is. At first, the recall provision was passed with only judges in mind, and later it was amended to include the state legislature and the governor. Back then, it made no sense to recall a politician who faced an election in a year or so. It took 70 years for the first state elected official to be recalled in 1996. That happened to be a good Republican Senator George P. Tag of the 22nd Senate District, I believe. It is now being served by AWO Senator Robert Wirtz, a Democrat. It was Senator P. Tax deciding vote to use taxpayers' funds to assist the Milwaukee Brewers in building a new park with a retractable roof. That got him in trouble. For that reason, the labor unions and unionized Democrats railroaded him out of office. This allowed Madison Senate Democrat Chuck Koala become the Senate leader. His term did not last long when he was confined to a nine-month prison term. So I'm recommended that this council remove the media charade and the red herring recall from our midst and proceed with the important people's business of this city and allow the good mayor to finish the good accomplishments he has started so far. It's time for some of you council members to work in good faith with each other. My public scrutiny on a city administrator will be at the next council meeting or the committee of the whole. Thank you. Thank you, Milt. Thank you, Milt. Is that all? That would be it. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for speaking at public forum this evening. Um, on to my favorite part of the evening, the mayor's announcements. Uh, one thing I would like to announce, um, on October 20th, 2011, from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. at King Park, there will be a landlord's training program. Uh, this is something that has been done in Milwaukee and Green Bay. This is for people that own properties that have tenants. Um, it's only a $10 fee, and out of that, it will be a four-hour four hour class. Uh, they will also receive a 100-plus page manual on the rules of being a landlord, uh, the, the laws of dealing with tenants, and some good advice on how to be a proper landlord and how to um, how to recruit proper tenants into your properties, uh, background checks, etc. Uh, this is something that our planning department and our police department have been working on for some time. Uh, this is also something that when we look at uh, issues uh, in municipal court regarding uh, landlord, tenant, etc., um, it would be in all the landlord's best interest to take this program, that they know that uh, the courts know that they are doing everything in their power uh, to do the proper thing and to be well trained. So again, that's uh, October 20th from 5.30 to 9.30 at the King Park Shelter on the south side of town. Um, any questions, uh, people can call the uh, planning department uh, in the city of Sheboygan or email. So that's coming up. It's, good. it's a great program, something that they've been working on for a while. Uh, we'll do nothing but benefit our city. I would like to... Uh, have a, offer a personal thank you uh, to everybody that participated in the activities last week for the Nations Cup. Um, we had 15 countries 
They came to Sheboygan for match racing. Uh, we had a great opening ceremonies. I know a couple aldermen attended. I know uh, Alderman Versi was there. Uh, Alderman Belt was there. Alderman Haman was there. And I was there, along with my daughter, <laughs> who sat on stage with me because she didn't want to be alone. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, thank uh, um, the uh, U.S. Sailing Center, Sail Sheboygan, for hosting this event. Uh, the Sheboygan Yacht Club, uh, the bid district for the Taste of Sheboygan, uh, Randy Schwer heading up the bid and all of the restaurants that participated. Um, I'd like to uh, thank the Blue Harbor Resort for a lot that they did for this event. Uh, I'd also uh, uh, like to thank Festival Foods who put on one heck of a fireworks display on Saturday night. If uh, anybody missed that, uh, it was the most unique fireworks display I think I ever saw. And I was watching it with the uh, Loxley Band, who were some guys originally from Madison, but out of New York. They've been living in New York for eight years, and they said, how the heck are we going to follow that up after the fireworks, because they had to play. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody that participated, uh, especially the ISAF, uh, who put their faith in Sheboygan to host this event, an international sailing event. I spoke to uh, the uh, chairman of the ISAF, or president of the ISAF, a uh, gentleman from Sweden, and he said that this event that was put on in Sheboygan was as good as any he's ever been to in the world. It's the smallest city it's ever been in, and he said that they will be back. So that's huge. So I'd like to thank everybody that, uh, that participated. Um, and uh, it was a great event. Uh, it showed what uh, Sheboygan is all about. And um, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody. Um, we have uh, some pertinent business to take care of this evening. Uh, it's all been discussed time and time again. Um, of course, you all know my feelings. Um, I've apologized for my actions in the past. Um, I've been sober for 57 days and will be every day in the future. I'm working on it every day. I think it's time that we put this behind us and get on with the business at hand, which is the business of the city. Everybody knows where I stand on the issue. Uh, everybody knows where my legal team stands on the issue. I don't see any winners in this. Um, I will say no more. I'm not going to participate in this conversation. I will ask that aldermen hold your discussion because we have discussed this time and time again to uh, two times, standing up twice. So we're not rehashing the same thing over and over again. Everybody knows that up front, so please choose your words carefully. So we're not here until midnight. So with that, I ask that you vote your consciences. Vote your conscience. That's all I ask. Thank you. Vice President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to pull forward document number 1238. <clears throat> okay, we have a motion to pull forward document 1238. Second. 12. We have a motion and a second, 1238, by the Committee of the Whole, recommending authorizing the Common Council to engage the services of special outside legal counsel to represent the council with regard to a quasi-judicial hearing and authorizing payment <laughs> for said services. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> I would make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion? There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? No. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Aye. Toth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? No. Raisler? Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Sampson? Aye. 
Van Akron? Aye. And Versi? Aye. Ten ayes, four noes. Motion carries. Vice President Decker, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to pull forward document number 1239. Second. Motion and a second to pull forward 1239. 1239 by the Committee of the Whole recommending authorizing the Common Council to engage the services of Special Outside Legal Counsel to represent the City of Sheboygan in the role of Special Prosecutor with regard to a quasi-judicial hearing. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the resolution. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt and pass the resolution under discussion. <coughs> Under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you. Um, I just think we want to look at this very closely as we go forward. I know many people have made many, many comments. Um, we've debated this to death. My concern is not for the mayor's reputation. My concern is for the reputation of the city going forward. Um, being privileged is some of the things I know about economic development and companies that are looking to move here. I would feel absolutely awful if one company decided not to move here and give this city the much needed jobs because of the antics of the mayor on a weekend in July. Again, I would ask those on the council to, to think about the long-term future of the city, not what could happen over the course of the next 14 months or if the recall goes through even sooner. Um, I'm not happy with what the mayor did. I think I've voiced that uh, adequately over the past couple months. But I do think we need to look at what the long-term future is, um, what the long-term vision is, and not get short-sighted on this. So again, I would ask you to reconsider if, you're, if you've voted for this in the past um, and look at what's maybe best for the city, not what's best for this situation. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Any further discussion? Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess I'd like to comment as well. Um, again, I don't uh, condone the mayor's activities, um, but I want to make sure that we're clear with uh, the fact that this is, uh, has no money attached to it. Uh, I have talked with the attorney, or we discussed it last uh, week at the Committee of the Whole regarding the investigation, and if there is any payment to be paid for an investigation by an outside uh, investigator, uh, I guess I want to make sure that, that we know that this does not uh, include this portion of it. Um, I've seen what happened in Manitowoc when they investigated the police chief and the attorney's uh, investigators came in and investigated it with thousands and thousands of dollars. So I guess that's where my concern is, that I want to make sure that we uh, understand that uh, if this does pass tonight, um, that there is no cost associated with it whatsoever. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Any further discussion? <coughs> There's no further discussion. Roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? No. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Nope. Raisler? No. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Versi? Aye. Missed one. I, and I missed one. Bolt. Belt. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Nine eyes, five noes. Motion carries. Vice President <coughs> Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to pull forward document number 1240. 1240 by the Committee of the Whole, creating Div Division 5 of Article 3 of Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code relating to the position of Chief Administrative Officer. Uh, one general ordinance number. 241112 by Alderman Hammond and Raisler, creating Division 5 of Article 3 of Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code relating to the same position. Under, okay, we have it pulled forward. Alderman Hammond? Alderman Bourne. Alderman Bourne. Thank you again, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to hold this. I think it would lie over because uh, in discussing this, with uh, City Clerk Richards today that this was a dual referral to the Committee of the Whole and Salary and Grievances. So is it, do I have to make a motion to that effect or it's automatically gonna go to Salary and Grievances? It already is in Salary and Grievances, but this would then lie over if that's your wish. Right. 
And as long as I'm standing here, Alderman Decker, were you going to bring forward 1241 also? Yes. Uh, I would make the same request on that one that it's, uh, it's already in salary and grievances, so it would go to the next uh, salary and grievance meeting. Second. So we have a motion and a second to hold because these will be discussed at the next salary and grievances meeting. <coughs> Under discussion on holding these documents, they will be referred to salary and grievances. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? They are being held. Okay, to the front of the list. Vice President Decker. Consent agenda 12-1. Through 1220. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that all ROs <clears throat> be accepted and placed on file, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move to call documents 12 1 and 12 9 and vote on them separately. 12-1 and 12-9, 12-1, an RO by the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners recommending filing document regarding the possibility of annexing the entire town of Wilson Dog Park to the city. And 12-9, uh, regarding the same issue. We will take those for a separate vote. So we will go 12-1 through 12-8, 12-10 through 12-20. Under discussion on the rest of the consent agenda. You meant 12-2. 12-2. Through 12-8. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Okay, 12-2 through 12-8 and 12-10 through 12-20. Any discussion on those items? If there is none, roll call, please. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 12-1 uh, and 12-9 under discussion. Alderperson Kath, would you like to comment on those? Thank you. Uh, um, I'm, I just have a few concerns annexing the dump, the town of Wilson dump to the city of Sheboygan. Okay. Um, just a, an explanation on this. Steve, would you like to comment on this, or shall I? Uh, I can. <clears throat> Basically, what we're at is uh, we are going to annex the property into the city. However, the ownership of the property um, and the liability on the property is going to remain with the town, I believe. That's the proposal from the town. Uh, and what I would suggest is if uh, the council approves these documents, that there be a more formal agreement drafted up um, that will cover liability issues and maintenance issues and so forth. But that's, uh, the town is in agreement that the property could be annexed to the city. Doesn't mean the city will own it. The town will still own that property, but it will be in the city for jurisdictional purposes, for law enforcement purposes, so we could enforce city ordinances for violations in the in the entire park right now one sliver of the park is in the city and the balance is in the town and it's become uh, somewhat of a jurisdictional issue over uh, uh, cross-border situations where our police officers don't have authority to uh, enforce our ordinances in the town portion and vice versa Okay, thank you, Steve. Any further discussion? Alderman Bercy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So just to clarify, once this passes, there will be more of an in-depth formal. Yes, I would see a formal agreement being drafted up, okay. submitted to both parties for okay. final approval. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bercy. Alderman Hammond, I believe this is your district. Yes. Please. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would just like to, I guess, uh, and Alderman, uh, Attorney McLean, uh, maybe you can fill me in on this, but um, I would like to make an amendment to this, if you will, that will approval pending a written agreement um, from the, or agreed upon by this council. Um, that way we can, we know that we're gonna see some sort of document coming through. I don't know if that can be a friendly amendment or if we need to, because um, I too say there are some concerns about having, um, you know, next property, in the town of Wilson, former dump, some of the issues that go along with it. Just want to make sure all the I's are dotted and T's across, as I'm sure they will be. 
Thank you, Alderman Hammond. So we'd like to make an amendment on this, um, basically a friendly amendment that states that uh, uh, we will move forward uh, um, and uh, get a more formal document to be approved by council. Got that, Sue? Yeah, can we get a motion just to accept and file and accept and adopt on these two? So moved. Second. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Under further discussion, Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I just, what exactly is the benefit then for the city? We annex the property <coughs> and the town remains or, or, or retains ownership. What, um, what, what exactly is the benefit from right now if there's jurisdictional issues, if we annex it and they still own it, then does that mean our police department's going to then completely enforce everything? Mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly why this issue came about to start with. Part of the park is presently in the city of Sheboygan. Part of it is in the town of Wilson. Um, and there were some problems with uh, um, basically enforcement of the rules of the park where people would, uh, uh, people would call the police department, they'd say it's in the town, the town would say it's in the city, uh, sheriff's department going back and forth with the police department. Uh, the advantage to annexing any property within to the city limits um, is that if you annex it into the city and it's part of the city, um, when in future annexations it's contiguous property. So anytime you can annex a piece of property, you get that much farther out to get a contigu contiguous annexation. Um, I believe at 100% in annexation myself. Uh, it's the only way the city can, can grow beyond its present borders. Uh, the, the, the drawback here is that this property is a former dump, which is why we're going to have the town keep ownership of it, so they have the ownership of the environmental liability uh, but we will annex it into the city to enforce the the rules of the dog park, if that makes sense. Any further questions, Alderman Board? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm on the Parks Board and also Chairman of the Public Works Committee, and a thing, uh, an item that I brought up uh, for discussion both at the Parks Board and at Public Works is that seeing that the Town of Wilson citizens are, are still going to benefit by this by being able to bring their dogs there and that our police department is going to have all law enforcement there. I think it only fair that possibly you consider working on an agreement uh, with the town attorney McLean that they pay something towards that uh, police protection out there. You know, maybe a couple hundred dollars a month uh, uh, is, I guess is a payment in lieu of taxes or something to that effect because their, their citizens are benefiting from the dog park and uh, I think we should consider uh, charging them something for the, from, for the uh, police protection out there. I understand from the officer that was at the parks board is that when the, when the uh, park first opened there were a number of issues out there with jurisdiction and, and, uh, uh, and now that we're going to be providing all the protection uh, <clears throat> perhaps they should be involved with defraying some of our costs on that. Thank you. I, I would just say that the proposal the town put forward does not call for the town making any financial contribution for law enforcement services. So if, uh, if that's the wish of the council that you want some financial uh, compensation by the town, uh, I would include that in this, in this uh, proposal that you're uh, acting on tonight because uh, uh, the expectation of the town is that they would not be making a financial contribution. Their contribution would be to provide uh, the annexation of the property. And, and I don't want to overstate the law enforcement problems out there. My understanding is, and I don't have a dog, but my understanding is that this park has been wildly successful. People really like it. And uh, I don't know if any survey has been done, but I would bet that a large percentage of the uh, users are city residents as opposed to town residents. But uh, yeah, this, you, you know, want to this give some direction as far as proposing cost sharing, that's up to the council. You and need a, do you need a motion? I'd like to hear it uh, in you know, a determination of the council as opposed to just one individual or a couple of in individuals. Alderman Bourne, would you like to make Thank a motion you. to that effect? I'll make a motion that Attorney McLean work out a cost share agreement with the Town of Wilson for police protection for the dog run. 
I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Um, under discussion, simply on the motion. The <laughs> amendment to work out a deal on cost sharing on that issue only. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to let you know, we've just dealt with this issue again recently as in my other life as a uh, sheriff's department employee. Um, there are many parcels in the city of Sheboygan, correct me, there are many parcels that the city of Sheboygan owns that are currently in the jurisdiction of the sheriff's department. So this would just be a complete opposite of that. The police department would have the jurisdiction for the calls to maintain the whole park without just being able to enforce things in certain areas. Uh, just as the sheriff's department has the jurisdiction over the property that belongs to the city of Sheboygan in numerous areas throughout the, uh, the immediate area of the city of Sheboygan. So we, we do this in a lot of different places where other jurisdictions cover and are not annexed in. And again, the reason we cannot annex in is, as, as the mayor stated, we don't own anything up to these parcels. So no, they stay without. Nothing contiguous to it. And, right. and I don't believe there's been any major issues at this park. I think it's just one guy not liking the way that the other guy's dog sniffed his dog or something I, I like that. I think the uh, chief would be the one to answer, but I don't think we have a lot of calls for service there, as in a lot. <laughs> Maybe you can answer, because I know we don't. We give them to you. <laughs> chief, any uh, issues out there that are major issues, or I don't think? If, if you're asking me for my opinion on what's going on, it's just that there's a, a couple people that weren't happy with, with the service they were getting, and so they see this as the sole Okay, thank you, Chief. So we have a bill. Good. Public Works Director Bill Bittner is going to give us some enlightened insight on this issue. Um, fully understand the idea of uh, if we're going to provide uh, services. The property should pay something in lieu of taxes, et cetera. But I want to go back a little bit to when we negotiated with this at Town of Wilson. This is a park that is owned, provided, fenced, and maintained by the Town of Wilson. Uh, the original agreement, we spent some capital changing some fences and some signs. They basically, when we proposed this park, wanted us to provide dollars to improve the park, to maintain the park, We've simply indicated, though it's a town of Wilson's Park, we will do some initial capital, which was modest at best. And there's a two-way street here to suggest if we're going to provide police protection, they should pay something for that. Well, I think their position has been, and they've ceded us to our position that this is also a park that they own, they maintain, and they provide a proportionate to the citizens of our community citizens of their community, and we pay almost nothing for that service. So just uh, the response to them would be logical to say, you provide some maintenance of the park and you provide some, some ongoing service. Thank you, Bill. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and that was going to be my question. Um, right now, it was my understanding that the town of Wilson was maintaining that park for us if we annex it. Um, a, will we be now on the hook for maintaining said property? And B, could that serve as a great compromise <coughs> with Alderman Bourne's point? You know, they'll maintain it. You know, we've got the police protection over and of course, um, I also certainly agree with uh, Alderman Riesler's point. You know, there are certain other areas that we pay, uh, although we have property there, we pay nothing um, for and the county picks up. So um, I would just throw that out. Attorney McLean, I don't know if that has been part of the conversations yet with those guys, but. Um, I would certainly think that would be a great compromise. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. From what I understand, the town will continue to own the dog park. So all other agreements will remain in place with the maintenance being primarily on the town, correct? That answers your question. 
Okay, any further discussion? Uh, I guess we are still talking about the amendment to ask the town to kick in a payment in lieu of taxes to the city. We had a motion and a second on that. Um, just discussing on the amendment. All in favor of that amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. 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 Okay, let's do a roll call on the amendment, and I vote will amend it that we are going to request that the town also include a payment in lieu of taxes uh, when we annex their property. Decker? No. Hammond? No. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Matichak? Aye. Raisler. Abstain. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? No. Versi? No. Belt? No. Oren? Aye. And Carlson? No. Five eyes, eight noes, one abstention. Okay, motion fails. Back to the original, which is the original document, along with the amendment of, <clears throat> what was the amendment, Alderman Hammond? Oh, asking that uh, we have a formal document <coughs> that comes back to the council. Right. Correct? Yes. yes. Under discussion on that? Alderman Sampson? Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Was there any discussion as far as the cost? If, if we annex this property, granted they own and they maintain it, but is where are, they, where are they going to get the money then to maintain the property? Is that coming from the city? Where is it coming from now? They're, they take care of it. It's coming from the town. Okay, so once we annex it, they will still maintain funding for that? So then in the future, is there any possible? They, they will retain ownership of it. We are simply annexing it as far as being part of the city. It will still be owned by the town. So at this point, the city would then not be liable for any potential cost. If, if the town says, well, we, we don't have the, the, re, you know, the money available to maintain it, since you have it annexed, they come to us looking for any kind they of would, They would still re retain ownership of it. Okay, so the city doesn't have anything to do with no. funding, anything like that? No. No? Okay. And uh, when they offer to let us own it, we'll say no, being a dump. Alderman? Kittleson. Thanks, Mayor. I, too, I went to a meeting at the town of Wilson when this was all in the beginning stages, and um, I think it's just, it's basically for law enforcement. They will maintain the park, they'll keep it, but we're annexing it in so that law enforcement can have control. One area of law enforcement can have control over the park, and, and am I correct in my assumption of that, uh, Steve? One area of law enforcement will be responsible for the dog park. That's kind of what the discussions I've had with Thank the you. town attorney. That's, the, right. I think that's the, that's the goal. That's so the if goal. we have a dog feces violator, the police department knows about them when right. they go there for the return trip. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson, Alderman Matichek. Um, Just have a simple question. If we're annexing this and they retain, retain ownership, do we get uh, property tax from them? No. No. The town of Wilson is exempt from property taxes as a municipality. Just uh, and could, could they future sell the property to someone else, even though it's a dump? I mean, if they if a future buyer, they perhaps theoretically could, but uh, as the mayor indicated, this is a former uh, landfill site. Uh, the likelihood, I don't really think the property can be used for much else other than some sort of. Uh, Passive recreational use on the like surface. A dog park. <laughs> so. But if you'd like to increase your land holdings, I bet you it's a sweet deal. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please, as amended. Okay. So we are doing just one document, the RC. Or shall we do both? Let's do both. Okay. Anybody opposed to both? Okay. Which which ones are we voting on now? Excuse me. Twelve one. Uh, twelve nine and twelve one. Okay. Thank one you. is going to be accepted and filed. The other one has the amendment on it. Okay. Uh, Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. No. Kittleson. Aye. Matichek. Aye. Raisler. Abstain. Sampson. Aye. 
Ben Akron. Aye. Versi. Aye. Belt. Aye. Warren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. 13 ayes, one no, and one abstention. Motion carries. Okay, moving on. We're Sorry, that was 12, 1, and 1, 13. Never mind. Okay, moving on. Are we still on the consent agenda or are we through with it now? Um, We're done with consent. We are done with the consent agenda. Then I have something else. You had something else? Yes. Okay, we're moving on to the reports of officers, too. Thank you. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to pull forward document number 1120. Second. Okay, 1120 is... I thought that was... The page is 1120 on, Alderman. Okay, matters laid over by the city clerk submitting a citizen complaint from Patrick Gillette regarding the conduct of the mayor during the August 15, 2011 council meeting. Under discussion, uh, I checked with uh, Attorney McLean on this citizen complaint, and this meets all of the criteria for a valid complaint, and therefore I would like to refer this directly to the special prosecutor. Make a motion to that effect. Second. Okay, we have, this was on matters laid over. Um, under discussion. <clears throat> Eleven twenty. Alderman Bourne, this would be actually just <coughs> forwarded on, I would think, because it's we not. Don't a, have to vote on it. Well, it's not a committee. It's not a. It's not a city committee. So if you want it forwarded, well, I'd to, make a motion then to just forward it to the special prosecutor. So if I need to do that, or we can just forward it. Attorney McQueen, do we have to vote on the forwarding of it, or can we just forward it? Um, I guess I would recommend voting on that as opposed to filing it or something so that it's clear in the record what's uh, taking place with it. Forwarding it, okay. So I, and I would make a motion to uh, file, doc, uh, uh, I would make a motion on document number 1120, the citizen complaint from Patrick Gillette uh, directly to the special prosecutor. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. I would like to comment on this. Uh, this motion basically states that in this council meeting when I was speaking, I was out of turn or something to that effect and I violated every rule in the book. Every alderman in this room had the opportunity to call point of order. Point of order, no. Uh, you are a citizen, you are not an alderman. Mr. Gillette. Call Mr. Gillette to the floor. Speak. Open floor. Second. All in favor of citizen Gillette coming to the floor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Gillette. <coughs> Who seconded that, by the way? Alderman Versi called it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor and Council, this is exactly what my complaint states of August 15, 2011. If this continues to happen in this Council, there will be other action taken. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Gillette. Any further discussion? Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess in, in reading this, I, I think a lot of the, some of the violations are of Robert's rules of order, and, and I guess quite frankly, uh, if you attend my committee meetings, I'm probably gonna be in violation of every one of those as well um, at a certain point in time. So I, I guess I, I appreciate the, uh, the complaint by Mr. Gillette, um, and I, with all due respect, uh, I'm probably in violation of that as well. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Uh, the motion is to accept and forward. Forward, forward to the special prosecutor. Roll call, please. Hammond. Me? Hammond. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Matichek? No. Raisler? No. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. 
Percy. Aye. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. No. Decker. Aye. Hammond. No. Eight eyes, six no's. Motion carries. Okay, where were we here? We're on 1221, reports of officers. Oh, now we're finally past the consent agenda. We're on reports of officers 2, 1221 through 1229 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 1230 by Alderman Boren, authorizing the City of Sheboygan and its appropriate city officials to formally accept the following project, Western Interceptor Cure in Place Pipe and Manhole Rehabilitation Contract Contractor, Visusur Inc., as part of the requirements with the Clearwater Fund Loan used to finance the project. <clears throat> Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to uh, suspend the rules on this one, please. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you. Just a clarification why. I'm assuming it has to do with the grant or the loan, excuse me. Uh, I think I'll call on the Director Bittner to explain this, please. And Bill, you may want to stay up there for 31 and 32 also. <laughs> Grab a chair. Bring a chair. This is a, a project that's completed and it was funded partially by a loan through the state. This particular resolution is part of the loan package to close on the loan. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? There is nobody opposed, the rules are suspended, Alderman Boren. Uh, then I would make a resolution to put the uh, resolution upon its passage. Second. I have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage in a second under discussion. If there's no discussion, roll call, please. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Bracelet? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Fursey? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries, 1231 by Alderman Boren, approving Memorandum of Understanding with Sheboygan County and the Wisconsin DNR for Sheboygan River Rehabilitation Project, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I also would like suspension of the rules on this. Second. We have a motion to second to suspend the rules under discussion on suspension. Under discussion on suspension, this is the time of the essence is on this to have this plan done for the uh, river frontage improvements. Uh, I believe that uh, Part of Public Works would like to get to act on this within the next week. Therefore, I'm asking for suspension. Director Bittner, did I cover it? Oh, there you are, Bill. <laughs> is that pretty well covered? Yeah, this is basically the, uh, is this the DNR grant that we got mm -hmm. for restoration on the shoreline? Okay. Um, are we discussing suspension or are we on to, okay, is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Rules are suspended, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I then would like to make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. <coughs> There's no discussion, roll call please. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Percy. Aye. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1232 by Alderman Boren authorizing a professional services agreement with SEH for the design phase of the Sheboygan River Habitat Restoration Project. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Again, I'd like suspension on this one. Second. second. Motion and a second. Is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Rules are suspended. And again, time of, of, is of the essence on this one also to uh, get going on the plan. Uh, this work is funded through a, an agreement with the DNR not to exceed $450,000 and time is of the essence to get this, uh, this plan moving. Can we have a motion please? Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, 
put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Manachek? Aye. That was Aye. mine. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 1233 by Alderpersons Rin Fleischborn and Van Akron authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2011 budget to establish appropriation for Sheboygan River habitat restoration with the Wisconsin DNR. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I also ask for suspension on this one, and again, this ties in with the other documents that time is the essence on getting this uh, transfer approved. Motion and a second to suspend the rules. Under discussion, is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? If there's uh, not, rules I, are suspended. Please continue. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Percy? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1234 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 1235 by Law and Licensing stating that they scheduled a quasi-judicial hearing to determine whether the beverage operator license number 9130 held by Mike Gruno should be suspended or revoked and stating the facts and finding of facts. Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted to revoke Mike Gruno's beverage operator license. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. <laughs> there is no discussion. Roll call, please. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Matichuk? Aye. Motion carries. 14 ayes. <laughs> 1236 by Public Protection and Safety, recommend filing general ordinance number 2011-12 by Alderpersons Van Akron, Heidemann, and Decker, repealing and recreating section of the municipal code so as to require notice to neighbors of an appeal pursuant to section 7265 of the code. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, make a motion that we file this document. Second. Motion to accept and adopt. And file. file. And file. Correct. And a second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, what occurred with this is the police chief came forward and explained that the police department would be able to basically take on this effort without causing a fee to be in place. Basically, they would come forward and be able to notify anyone who signed up of upcoming public protection and safety um, meetings that would be in reference to any sex offender residency <laughs> restrictions. They would also put that on their website as alerts so that this information is more publicly distributed. People are able to locate it on the uh, police department's website as well as anyone who signs up would receive a, a text or an email as a reference to these meetings. And if they wanted to come and collect more information at these meetings, they would then have that information. Thank you, Alderman Van Acker and Alderman Decker. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Van Akron explained it quite well. Unless uh, the police chief has anything else to say, more specifics on. Fine. Chief just gave us the big no. Good. <laughs> Any further discussion? There is no discussion. No further discussion. Roll call, please. Jansen? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? No. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. And Raisler? Aye. 13 ayes, one no. Motion carries. Reports of committees 8, 1237 by finance recommending setting the rates for the provision of dedicated fire and medical services. Standbys provided to the public by the Sheboygan Fire Department and passing the attached 
Substitute resolution, Finance Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the substitute resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Versi, first to the button. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to just kind of point out to the fact that I don't agree with this whatsoever. Um, this, this is a service that has been done and since the city of Sheboygan taxpayers are requesting these, such as the Sheboygan Youth Football, they did do standbys down there, and now they're gonna go ahead and charge for that same standby with all these city taxpayers being down there. I guess they kinda of have an issue with that. Um, in the past, it's been a private service and they had to pay for it. Actually, they didn't pay for it in the, in the past. Now that they're gonna to have to pay for it, I feel like they're already doing a service by having their community functions in our city, and now we're gonna penalize them if they wanna have some coverage there, which is paid for by tax dollars already. So I'm not in, in supporting this tonight because of that reason. I think it should still be a community service that we provide. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderman Van Akron. I, I guess I'd first open the floor to Chief Herman if he'd like to answer any questions in reference to this, if he can make his way up here. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Versi, that's, um, that's not correct. We are not charging those um, organizations. It's only the, the organizations that have requested us to be dedicated to that event that we cannot leave. Um, the standbys that we're doing at the football, they understand if we get a call and we have to leave, we'll replace that with another med unit, um, but we're not charging them. Thank you, Chief. Any further questions for the Chief before you uh, hobble back away? Alderman Van Akron, please. Continuing, like the chief said, it, it's for the dedicated service where that ambulance unit would not be able to leave that event. Um, some of the ev uh, events that were given for examples were some of the martial arts events, boxing events, where they, by insurance reasons, need to have an ambulance at that event. Um, again, I, I think it's appropriate then to charge that group for having an ambulance that has to be there and can't leave. Um, the charges would cover an overtime uh, unit to then stay at that event for that duration. So I would be in favor of this. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I was just going to ask the, ask the fire chief for clarification. Very good. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Van Akron? Aye. Versi? No. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hamp? Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. And Samson? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Uh, 1238 through 41 have already been taken. Ordinance is introduced 10, 1242 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1120. RO number 166-1112 by the city clerk. Uh, I think that, did we already take that one? That's already yep. done. Yep. Should remember that. Uh, matters laid over 1174, resolution number 74-1112 by Alder Persons Rinfleisch, Boren, Matichek, and Van Akron, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2011 budget. Establish estimated revenue and appropriation for 2011 Community Development Block Grant Entitlement Program, also known as CDBG. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, actually, that should be uh, document number 1134. That's correct. Okay, I make 1134, a 1134, that's a typo. If correct. everybody can note that. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Please continue. Uh, make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to uh, motion for division of the question in regards to the funding for Partners for Community Development as I intend to abstain. Okay. Um, I don't think there'll be a problem with this thing passing. Can you just abstain on the whole thing rather than... If it's close, we'll take it again. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Um, any further discussion? There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Abstain. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Abstain. Heidemann? Aye. 
Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. And Van Akron? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 abstentions. Motion carries 1156, General Ordinance Number 231112 by Alder Persons Vanderweel, Koth, and Rinfleisch, amending various sections of Section 94131 of the Municipal Code so as to make changes to reporting documentation and other requirements of pawn shops in the city of Sheboygan, Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Just for a little history, uh, back when I was chairman of lawn licensing uh, a few years ago, uh, we had a pawn shop in Sheboygan that was causing a lot of problems. So we, we did an ordinance, but I'm glad to see that lawn licensing has addressed this again and updated the ordinance. And I particularly like the uh, part in here where, we, where they would have to do daily reports to the police department. Uh, that should, hap should help the uh, uh, police department with, with theft crimes and people trying to fence this stuff in Sheboygan. So, I think this is a great enhancement to the original ordinance that we did a couple of years ago. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Belt? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 14 eyes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 1243, an RO by the Director of Parking and Transit submitting a property damage release due to a bus being totaled in an accident. <coughs> Transit. Alderman Vice President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I didn't know who was fortunate enough to be on transit. That'd be me. Sorry. I move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second yeah. to accept and place on file. Under discussion? Your Honor, if I could. Steve, please. Uh, if I could, uh, Ron McDonald apparently hurt his back over the weekend and couldn't be here tonight, but <clears throat> he asked me to uh, present this to the council. Uh, the Transit Commission is requesting that uh, you uh, authorize by a motion tonight the mayor to sign the attached property damage release form uh, for this bus. The, uh, the background is this bus uh, <clears throat> was on the uh, was totaled, as I understand it, uh, some time ago. Uh, we had transit uh, mutual insurance provided uh, insurance, property damage insurance to the extent of $50,000, and that was paid to the city. The, the buses apparently are titled in the name of the city of Sheboygan. Uh, so the city got its full uh, stated value of $50,000 from its insurance carrier. Uh, the insurance carrier has the right to subrogate and collect damages from the responsible party. So this $20,000 release is uh, Transit Mutual Insurance getting reimbursed for the $20,000 by the insured of waste management. Uh, so the transit director is requesting that the council authorize the mayor to sign the property damage release that's attached. Thank you, Steve. Uh, under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a, mo or a, a motion to amend the, the uh, report of officer to allow the mayor to sign the property damage release. Second have a motion and a second to amend and accept and file. Any further discussion? All in favor of accepting and filing as amended say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, 1244, an RC by the Committee of the Whole making a favorable recommendation to the Council on the 2012 benefits proposal. Committee of the Whole, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I make a motion that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to forward this back to salaries and grievance for uh, reevaluation. Uh, 
we had a lot of conversation and I'm hoping that some people had an opportunity to reevaluate some of the cost savings that are actually in here that we're missing out on, especially by um, the insurance portion of it and um, not paying out um, the sick leave uh, and thus requiring the employees to stay on our insurance as retirees, which uh, I, again, as uh, I think we beat to death last time, there's a ton of cost savings here and I'd like to see it go back there on, on Monday night and everybody's welcome to come to Salaries and Grievance and have the discussion with me along with the uh, city administrator's position as well as I think we'll have a packed house, so thank you. Second. Who second? We have a motion and a second to send this to Salary and Grievances. Yes. Yeah. Under discussion on sending this back to Salary and Grievances. There is no discussion. All in favor of this going back to Salary and Grievances say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Roll call, please. An aye vote will send it back. A no vote will keep it here for further discussion this evening. Okay, Boren. No. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? I'm sorry, can you verify what, we're, what, what is this for This again? would be to refer back to salary and grievance, an I vote? No. <laughs> Van Akron? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. Nine eyes, five no's. To salary and grievances it goes. That rhymed. Okay, moving on to 1245, an RO by the city clerk granting various licenses. <laughs> licenses, Vice President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file. Under discussion? There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1246, an ordinance by Alderman Boren amending general ordinance number 161112 relating to wards and aldermanic districts in order to update the wards and districts as the state changed the redistricting lines. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I believe we need suspension on this one. And the reason for that is uh, uh, Madam City Clerk has to get this back to the county clerk, I guess already tomorrow, to put the, fini put the finishing touches on this. Second. Third. Madam, do you have to do that? I, yeah, the county board meets on a final thing for this tomorrow night. Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? The rules are suspended, otherwise. Uh, then I would make a motion to put the general ordinance upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion? Under discussion, Vice President Decker, did you, or is this old? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I would just like to hear from the city clerk's office in reference to the changes that are being made and why we are again looking at the changes that are being made, a lot of which affect my district and Alderman Hammond's district. I guess just why these changes keep coming up. I can do that briefly. Um, we had the lines drawn, the redistricting between us and the county, and then the state came in and made a decision to change the lines. Um, so the first map that you received was the original redistricting map that we had that set out. Um, we had 23 wards at that time. Uh, when the state came through and changed the lines, which will affect Alderman Van Akron and Alderman Hammond, um, we actually were forced to divide three wards into six. And some of them are 200 people, some of them are 400 people, so it, it really created quite, quite a bit of problems for us. We've had to do it, we have to get it to the county by tomorrow night. Um, basically now we will have 26 wards. Most of the problem occurs in wards four through nine, which are the small, kind of this northern central area if you see on the map that's up here. Um, Basically, we, we had hoped to stay with 16 polling places. I'm going to have to go to 17. However, the cost factor will not be as high as I thought because we have been able to acquire two machines. We have one, an extra one and the county has one, so we will be able to use those. 
for that 17th ward. However, we still will have manpower, et cetera, for that. Um, as soon as it passes tomorrow night, we'll get a more refined map. We'll get it on the internet. We'll get it to you so that you have your district lines. And right now, we're just kind of right at the last stages here. Great. Thank you, Sue. And uh, to offset that uh, labor issue, aldermen can volunteer for polls <laughs> outside of their own districts, correct? I thought it was required. <laughs> in fact, I'm sure it is. That would, that would solve that uh, increase in labor problem there. Steve. Yes, I have a question to the city clerk. Uh, the document on my desk anyway says the actual ordinance will be on the desk Monday evening. Legal descriptions are still in process. Are, are they going to be completed by tomorrow? You should have one. There was, yeah, you should have it. It was under okay, I didn't get one. 12 48. They, they have been distributed. Oh. The legal descriptions. They, yes, they've okay. got 26. We worked very hard okay. Friday afternoon and this uh, morning between the engineers and us, and there are 26 legal descriptions. No polling places yet, but 26 legal descriptions. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Steve. Any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, roll call, please. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, aye. I know Van Akrens wants to say no, but I know he's going to say aye. yes. <laughs> Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Born? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. We are going to be going into closed session. Hold uh, on, there's one more document. Oh. Surprise document. There's a law and licensing document. I didn't, oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, other other matters. Excuse me, Attorney McLean. There's two of them actually. We did one already. Oh, we did one. 1247 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license did. applications for the period ending June 30, 2012, and June 30, 2013. That uh, is referred to law and licensing. 1248 is an ordinance amending general ordinance number 16-1112 passed by council on July 18th in order to update the number of wards and the legal descriptions that we, we just acted on apparently. Yeah. Okay. We're okay. This is done already. Yep. Correct, Sue? That's right. All right. Okay, we are going to be moving into closed session at which time... I would like to uh, mention something to the council if it's appropriate because I notice I after we're out of closed session we're not going into open session so I would no we're not so could I announce something to the council I can, I can contact uh, meeting notice sure <clears throat> I just want to make the uh, council aware that I'm going to be calling a, a committee of the whole meeting this coming Wednesday night probably at six o'clock but I have to make sure there's no conflicts with other with other committees but I think it's going to be six o'clock. And the reason uh, the, the uh, committee of the whole meeting will be in closed session. And uh, the purpose of the closed session will be to confer with legal counsel, uh, attorney Joseph Volkner. He wanted he called me today and said if his hiring passed tonight, he wanted to have a meeting with the committee of the whole as soon as possible. So that will be Wednesday night at six o'clock in closed session. Uh, there might be one other ad agenda item on there. Uh, Marge Matter and Constituent uh, referred something to the Committee of the Whole, so I'll give Marge a chance to speak on that Wednesday night because it is timely what we're going to be talking about at Salary and Grievance on Monday, but I don't anticipate, anticipate it being a long meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, just as a FYI to Alderman Bourne, there is a RDA meeting that may be a fairly lengthy one. It starts at 5 on the 21st. Um, so you I'll make it 6.30 in, or after that meeting. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so it's 6.30 or following the Redevelopment Authority meeting. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Uh, we are going to go into closed session, at which point all media, et cetera, et cetera, citizens must uh, depart the room. Um, Jeremy needs to do a motion. Can we have a motion for closed session? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in the closed session under the exemptions provided in section 19.85 Wisconsin statute 
for the purpose of discussion, deliberation, or formulation of negotiation strategies relative to possible collective bargaining agreements, <coughs> excuse me, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, after we do go into closed session, we are going to take about a 10 minute recess. Allow everybody to get out of here. All in favor of going into closed session, state aye. 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 Opposed? We are in closed session. We will reconvene here at uh, in 10 minutes or 14 minutes till on this clock. Sorry.